dead draw gaming like no one ever was. Hey guys, this is Miss Myla, affiliate Pokemon TCGO streamer on Twitch.tv, and you're listening to Dead Draw Gaming, like no one ever was. What's up, Dead Drawers, and welcome to episode number 71 of Dead Draw Gaming, a Pokemon TCG podcast like no one ever was. We have a super exciting episode for you guys today, so if you are hyped just like we are, make sure to hit that like button down below and share this podcast with all of your friends. So before we get too far into it today, Dead Drawers, I am going to go ahead and introduce you guys to my co-hosts who are with me every single week. Hello, Danny. Hello, Darren. What is going on? What up, guys? Darren here. I am sitting here looking at Pokemon and trying to pick out my top five for today's episode. Uh, This is actually kind of tough, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be fun. The rest of the episode, though, man, I'm pretty excited. Uh, (laughs) We got a bunch of really cool stuff to talk about, and I think we should probably get to it as quickly as as we can. But first, Danny, how are you? Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, dang everybody. it, it will be. It will be by the time this goes up, yeah. It's a little bit before Valentine's Day right now. But I figured happy Valentine's I would be the first Dead Draw owner to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. And that's all I have to say, really. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. I'm doing great. I went to... <laughs> <laughs> I went to a hockey game this weekend. What's and- hockey? <laughs> can't do it <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it was in there minneapolis was Minnesota when the wild played the chicago blackhawks and as a blackhawks fan i was pretty disheartened because they got shut out because the wild goalie devin dubnik played out of his mind 43 safe shutout but inside the wild store i found a super cool hat it's a ccm hat with the old nhl shield on it and the back says class of 67 and on the side it has the logos from the six teams that joined the nhl when they expanded to 12 teams in 1967 it's probably my favorite hat now and for those of you that know me know that i really really like hats i collect them i basically wear them all the time including when i sleep and shower so it's really yep when you sleep yep that's weird. really like hats dang I thought you guys would think it was funny that I said it's weird that you wear it when you sleep, but not weird that you wear it when you shower. Shower caps, man. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Do we have an agenda? Are we talking about anything this week? <laughs> no. Seventy <laughs> first. Seventy top five shower caps. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Seventy one weeks in a row, and for the first time, we don't have an agenda. Do you want so. me to name you guys five different brands of shower caps? <laughs> no. Because I can. <laughs> okay, do it. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I'd have to Google it. And oh, yes, tell me called what we're talking out. about this week. <laughs> All right. Anyways, you guys, we're going to start out this week with some Pokemon news, and there is a lot of it, including lots of card leaks. Then we're going to talk about Oceana, do a review of that since that Intercontinental just happened this weekend. Then we'll also do a brief St. Louis preview, uh, brand new meta, so that should be fun to talk about. Then we're going to do our weekly top five. Then we'll jump into a brief business update for you guys because there's a lot of exciting stuff going on in the DDG world. Then we will do our weekly stuff, the question of the week, the buy, sell, trade of the week, our open discussion, and our wrap. So I will let Danny and Darren take it away at this point, talk about what we've got going on for that non-TCG news. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hop in, talk about a little, little bit of Pokemon Go. Uh, as Danny mentioned earlier, it is Valentine's Day when you are listening to this episode. That means you have just about completely missed the Valentine's Day event in Pokemon Go, where Love Disc and Chansey are spawning very frequently, and they each reward you with three times the normal Stardust. That's right, each Love Disc and Chansey give you 300 Stardust apiece, and the Love Disc have a chance of being golden Love Disc, the shiny version. Yo, I actually saw Pokemon Evolutionaries caught one of those. Man, he's been on a roll. He's got like three Swablus and a Love Disc this past week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's killing it. (laughs) 
I have none. Just in case anyone was curious, I have I have none. No, I also have none. No shiny swablus. No shiny love disc. None disc. None disc is right. Oh, it hurts. Uh, <laughs> in more Pokemon Go news, the quest data. You know this whole questing thing that I was a little unhappy with the past couple weeks. It's been removed. <laughs> Uh, Interesting. So it's, I mean, all of this is just stuff that they work on. Uh, it might come back in in a later update, but for now, the next update's APK code, it has been removed. And finally, the biggest Pokemon Go news of all, the rest of Gen 3 went live the day after our podcast went up as per our luck. Your lures are going to last for six hours Instead of the 30 minutes that they usually last. Whoa. I don't mm-hmm. know if I've ever sat in the same place for six hours. Dude, you do it at work every day. I don't sit at work. <laughs> oh. Well. Uh, well, neither do you and neither do I. <laughs> but we're all, we're all within, like, our work, neither, I guess Darren's is. But Danny and I, our jobs are not, like, at a big enough area to where if it was an area where you could put a lure... You wouldn't go outside of the radius of it. I would definitely go outside the radius of it. All right. (laughs) I wouldn't. (laughs) I guess there is one other thing I'd like to say. A whole bunch of new raid Pokemon are available. Uh, It looks like, I mean, there's just a ton of easy raids that are showing up, like Azumarill raids and Jinx raids and, like, just Pokemon that really are either soloable for anyone around level 30 or kind of just useless. I really don't know why they did that. Maybe no. just to get more people excited about raiding? I'm not sure. Don't talk about my Azumarill like that. Huge power belly drum. Oof. Uh, uh, but like, you know, Pokemon Go isn't really that kind of game, and you know that. Yeah, but... <laughs> just, just, just let me. Okay, okay. All right, that's fine. <laughs> uh, cast form also has different forms, as you would think. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, I saw some of the screenshots of that. That looks really cool. Like with the what whatever the weather is depending on is how you catch it. Yeah. Thought that was really cool. Nice but nice little touch. <clears throat> so I've got the sunny form and the uh normal form. Nice. But that's all we got for Pokemon <laughs> Go news for this week. I'm sure something crazy and beautiful will happen tomorrow. Ooh, I guess one big thing, tomorrow's the last day that you can get your Kyogre. They, the Kyogre raids are disappearing on February fourteenth. Uh, they are. Uh, you can find Rayquaza raids right now, but uh, I think they're all going to be Rayquaza. Darren, after that. can we go catch a Kyogre tomorrow? Actually, probably. Sweet, I want one. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have to find more than just the two of us. We're going to need at least like six people. Well, aren't you in like a Discord group of eight hundred thousand people? I am, which you should also be in, but... Is okay. there that many people? 800,000 is a stretch. There's probably 1,000. 800,000 is definitely a stretch, though. <laughs> <laughs> but still, 1,000 a, a in one Discord group for Pokemon Go? It's not bad, right? No, it's good. All right, Danny. As far as additional non-TCG-related news goes, there is a little bit of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon news updates, I guess. Not Ultra a whole news. lot. Ultra news. Uh, the first images of Coro Coro have leaked, and they have revealed that the news, the news on Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, uh, it looks like there's going to be a shiny Poi Pole that's going to be distributed in Japan to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon players from March 2nd through April 9th via a serial code. The Poi Pole is obtained by going to a participating store and showing them your copy of the game, after which you will receive the serial code. Uh, so all of our listeners in Japan, there you go. That's pretty cool. And then uh, also in the same issue of Koro Koro, it has been revealed that Lugia is going to take part in the next Pokemon movie uh, to as, as far as how extensive Lugia will be in it. We don't know yet, but uh, we'll find out as more details come out. So I guess that's pretty much it for additional non-TCG related news. There was one thing that came out that's non-TCG uh, as far as leaks go. Uh, and that is the announcement of where and when Pokemon Internationals is going to be. Dan, you want to talk about that? I do. So Pokemon Internationals, uh, 
in years past, over and over and over again, basically, it has been in Indianapolis, Indiana, except for in 2015 when it was held in Columbus, Ohio. Or that might have been 2016, now that I think about it. Whatever year it was there. Um, it is going back to Columbus, Ohio this year. So uh, that kind of... A lot of the players that go to Nats every year was a little bummed about it. Um, some people just have, you know, that sentimental value and kind of, you know, a heart towards Indianapolis. I, for one, am happy with the change. I had a lot more fun in Columbus than I did in Indy when I went. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, and it'll be at the Greater Columbus Convention Center, which is where it was held previously uh, for Nats that year it was there. And then uh, we already knew about Worlds in Nashville, but it's now been um, released. It will be at the Music City Center, which, from what I hear, is super nice. It's brand new. Yeah. And also, one kind of interesting little fact is uh, both tournaments are going up against a Taylor Swift concert. Yeah, I saw Brad Kershio tweeted out to (laughs) Taylor Swift asking her to stop by. So... (laughs) Maybe maybe go to both of these events and maybe she'll show up and play an executor deck from Roaring Skies. Is, is that because the attack is called Shake It Off? That's right. That would be the joke. Yep. yep. All right. Just in case our listeners didn't know. It's all right. I'm here all night. Got loads <laughs> of them typed up, ready to go. Hey, Jack Black, there's your Danny joke for the week. I love it. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. That was a yeah, solid okay one. With- I don't. I'm indifferent. I guess I would prefer Indianapolis because I think it's a little bit closer for me as far as mm-hmm. for us as far as getting there. Yeah. But uh, Columbus is fine. I'm super stoked about Nashville because that's closer than California. Uh, so I do like the idea of having worlds in a centralized location like internationals because it gives both coasts more of a chance to get out there. So if it's not going to be in the middle, then it should probably be in like Hawaii or Canada or. Yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier for the international players. Mm -hmm. Or, excuse me, a little bit more difficult for the international players. It does, but I think... There's just not as... There's not as many, um, like, centralized international airports as there is. So this, they would probably have to fly into, what, like O'Hare or Atlanta? Yeah, JFK probably, but just not not quite the same that... uh, not, Not quite as easy to get to as, you know, flying to LAX. So, well, there you go. Awesome. Well, then we can move into some of the TCG news uh, as far as card leaks go because there was quite a bit of them. Yo, I got so many. Uh, and I'm going to talk. The first one I'm going to talk about uh, is for all you Greninja players. And I think kind of brings um, an interesting turn to what has kind of been um, a pretty straightforward deck as the way it's been built. But we got the new Frogadier has been released. Um, so Frogadier, it is a stage one water Pokemon with 80 HP that evolves from Froakie. It has an ability called Quick Shuriken that reads, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. It has an attack called Water Drip. For one, Water Energy does 20 damage. It is weak to grass, no resistance, and has a retreat cost of one. So this is very different than the Frogadier that we are used to seeing. In Greninja decks with that water duplicates attack that really lets you kind of get Greninja set up faster than what you normally do with a stage two deck. Um, but this, uh, maybe you can start to see Greninja played a little bit differently, more like a bats list. Yeah, I think where... a lot of it's going to be dependent on what Greninja GX does. Well, exactly. And that, that was the next thing I was going to say. Absolutely. Because, I mean, what if Greninja GX comes out and it's like, oh, it's like Crobat where you place three, you know. Oh, uh, sudden shuriken! Place you know five damage counters down when you have all this Pokemon for your hand or something crazy. Dan, are you reading so. the future? I think that ooh, that sounds possible. Well, because well, okay, let's say let's say that is the idea, right? You don't even play this Frogadier, then you definitely play Water Duplicates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think in any case, uh, Water Duplicates is just superior right now. I I can't see like I mean even and if you use Water Duplicates and place your frogadier on your bench you don't get to use the ability because it's only from hand right so but all what i'm saying is like who knows maybe we'll see a cool kind of like 
Because I guess bats are still in standard because of generations. Crowbat um, isn't. Right. We don't have Crowbat, but we have Zubat and Golbat. Mm-hmm. Um, but who knows? It could bring... It's, we've seen bats be really successful before. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think that... What are the chances that we get a Greninja GX and a non-GX Greninja? Pretty low, mm, probably. Pretty... Uh, I don't know, man. I'm sure you'll get one, a, a Greninja in a future set that might do something somewhat decent kind of to offset where you'd be like, oh, well, I'll run a 2-2 split or something like that. I mean, in today's format, once we get through rotation, a lot of people aren't even going to necessarily worry about uh, Frogadiers as much, right? Because they'll just rare candy into a Frogadier GX, depending on what it does. Right. Water duplicates is just way superior. So once that rotates out, it's Greninja's going to... I mean, we'll see what the GX does. Right, absolutely. I'm... I'm- Everything I've said so far is mostly like meant for a new idea and not like for your typical Greninja decks. Yeah, there are so. two Frokies that are coming out also. One of them has 50 HP and it's got the coolest ability name ever, which is called Frubbles. Whether that's accurate or not, I don't know. But if it is, <laughs> that's really funny. It is. Because it's Frubbles. And I just like saying that word. Uh, but if it has any water energy attached to it, then the Pokemon's retreat cost is zero. Uh, but the other Froakie might be a little superior because it has 70 HP as opposed to 50 HP. Both the attacks are meaningless. Um, so Frubbles is correct. Frubbles return or refer to the bubbles that are around his neck. Froakie bubbles. Yep. Frubbles. I, that I'm not sure if that's where the name came from, but that now makes that you sense. say it out loud, it does make sense. But yeah, so Frubbles is real. That's true. That's a thing. But yeah, the uh, 70 HP is pretty important because um, Froki is a lot harder to get donked when it has 70 HP than when it has 60 HP. Perfect. Darren, you want to take uh, a new card? I a would love to. Cards? I have the page open for another starter Pokemon that uh, we should talk about. It's for Brakeson and Delphox. Uh, Brakeson. 90 HP fire Pokemon. Stage 1 evolves from Fennekin. First attack is a fire, energy, flare, 20 damage. Second attack, two fire and a colorless flamethrower for 80 damage. Discard an energy from this Pokemon. Weak to water. Resist none. Retreat 2. This is a really bad card. Next up, we have <laughs> Delphox. Fire type. 150 HP. Stage 2 Pokemon. Uh, its ability is Magical Torch. Once during your turn before you attack, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon burned. Its attack is 2 Fire, 2 Colorless, Fire Spin. 150 damage. Discard 2 energy from this Pokemon. Weak to water. No resistance. Retreat cost of 2. This card is also not good. <laughs> <laughs> But you can leave your opponent's active Pokemon burned. There are right. much so, better ways to do that, I feel like. Like yeah, bringing there's a, a lighter. Or- <laughs> oh, jeepers, creepers. <laughs> this torch. card is... Don't I do mean, that. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to make burn relevant, right? It's just sort of weak. And I don't know, man. This doesn't make it better. Basically, what it's doing is making your fire spin do 170. But... I am a possibly more damage. It's just but still I four don't. energy to set it up. For a stage two, yeah. Yeah, I have not seen so since they changed the ruling of burn to what it is now, there hasn't been a relevant card in the format that has used burn. Well, if you remember, there hasn't even been a card that causes burn <laughs> since black and white. No, there's been causes. There's been burn. Well, well, there was nothing in XY is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, in Sun and Moonblock there has been, but none of them have ever made a, you know, a resurgence at all. Mm -mm. I think the Salazzles were the closest thing to viable. Yeah, definitely. If I was at a tournament and somebody left me burned as far as the status condition goes, (laughs) I would have to call a judge to see what to do. Flip my card over and look at him like, uh, is this right? Uh, I have no idea what to do right now. <laughs> and then I would just like take a couple dice and put them on my card. You know, I've been carrying around my burn counter for three years and I haven't used it. But why? Why do I still have it? I don't. <laughs> I, I played in a league challenge one time 
And the person that I was playing against was playing Entei GX Volcarana. Okay. The one that did place four damage counters instead of two <laughs> when you're burned. Was his name MJ? Jeez. I don't re- I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember playing the deck and I was like, what is happening? I won. <laughs> In case you're Wait, wondering. You won? Ha <laughs> ha. Awesome. All right, Dan, why don't you take another one? How about an importer? It is an item card coming up from SM6, Forbidden Light, that reads, move a special energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of the Pokemon. You may play as many item cards as you like during your turn before you attack. I think that's very interesting of a card. So here's how I'm looking at this, right? This is, I feel situational, depending on what deck you're playing, because or playing against, excuse me, because a lot of the times enhanced hammer is just going to be better, right? But if you're playing against a deck that has puzzles, um, this might almost be better because you can move it somewhere to where it's literally useless versus putting it in their discard for them to find it later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. There's only I- two problems I have with this. Well, one problem is when you dis- when you move a special energy to a bench to Pokemon. I don't know what Pokemon you're going to be able to move it to where it's not going to cause you issues. You know what I mean? Like, so they're attacking with a Zorark. Well, you can move it to a Lele, but Lele is still a decent attacker. Mm-hmm. What would happen, Darren, if somebody was playing Buzzwall Garbodor yep. and I moved a strong energy from their Buzzwall to their Garbodor? It would, it would attach. Discarded. It would attach to the Garbodor, and then since it's not a fighting Pokemon, it would go to the discard. Okay. So it'd be like discarding. It'd be yep. like an enhanced hammer almost then. That's right. But if it was a DCE on your buzzwall, I don't know why, uh, and you moved it to the Garbodor, then that Garbodor would have a DCE on it. And I mean, that's fun. Yeah, because it doesn't really, because what Garb's Retreat is three, right? It is. Yeah, it's a pretty useless card on, on Garbodor. <laughs> <laughs> so. But like that that's why it's interesting, right? Because I would rather the energy stay on board and be on something that's useless versus go into the discard so they can find it later with puzzles. Or or Oh no, wait, never mind. Never mind. I'm not even gonna say that. Cut that part. Okay. If I find it when I'm editing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I made this longer, so I can find it more easily. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Anyways, I think Anna Porter is very gonna... interesting. I think it uh hmm, I think you're right when you said that enhanced hammer may be better in most circumstances. Cool. But it's like like I said, puzzles are super relevant right now. Yeah. Um but there's not a lot of cards that like what kind of Zoroark deck are you playing against where moving a DCE to something on the bench is like <laughs> something that you want to do? Dude, yeah, I'm trying to think of where can you put it that helps. Maybe a Pokemon that already has a DCE on it, so now it's got two DCE, and it's not Gardevoir? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it could be good against Gardevoir if you're moving it to, like, Octillaries or something. Dude, what if you're playing um, Gardevoir, and then you move their DCE whoa. to the Pokemon you're attacking for a plus 60? Whoa. Darren. <laughs> That's the uh, smartest thing. Uh, I'm not a pro player. So far. <laughs> but no, that definitely brings up like an interesting like idea. Because um, you're wanting there to be more damage. It's basically like multi-switch that you can use on your opponent. Yeah. So Gardevoir should definitely play one of these. Neat. <laughs> uh, moving on. One. We can <laughs> we can move on. We've been on Enna Porter for a while. Danny, do you want the next one? <laughs> Yeah, I'll talk about Eevee and Sylveon here Ooh. from Forbidden Light. So another Eevee, uh, after we just had two in the last set, uh, and still none of them that compared to the Energy Evolution one, including this one. So this is 60 HP, basic Pokemon. For one colorless, it does gnaw for 20 damage. Weak to fighting, no resistance, one retreat, nothing special there. And then Sylveon, fairy type, 90 HP, really cool looking art. Uh, for one colorless, it does wink. Your opponent reveals their hand. You may discard a supporter card you find there. If you do, use the effect of that supporter as the effect of this attack. And then for a fairy and a colorless, it does magical shot for 40 damage. Weak to metal, resist 
resistant to darkness and a retreat cost of one. So I think that this card is pretty cool for its first attack. It's going to be super situational. Um, I wish it was different. What was what was that Smurgle that had portrait? Yeah. Yep. So it'd be really cool if it had like that type of thing. So I actually think that like a lot of people are comparing the two, but I don't know that portrait is necessarily better. Sure, portrait's not your attack for the turn. Um, but all right, let's say that uh, like you use wink. And your opponent has two cards in their hand, and it's an Ultra Ball and a Professor Sycamore. Okay, well, your attack means you just got to discard your whole hand, which, first of all, you get to choose if you want to do that or not. Um, But not only that, but now their Professor Sycamore is discarded, and their next card is dead. You know? Yeah, but if you you do discard discard the supporter, I think is, like, better than leaving it in your opponent's hand, right? Yeah, but if you do choose to discard that Sycamore... You have to discard discard your hand. You don't get to choose. No, no. Obviously, I'm just saying like that. It it's pretty situational, but it's definitely better that it discards it versus just leaving it in their hand. Sure. No, I can understand that. I think this is great for information, and I do think that this is something that could be playable in some decks. Um, I just think on a 90 HP Pokemon, like it's not really bulky enough to make it worthwhile necessarily because you're probably getting KO'd on the next turn most likely sure but depending on where you're at in the game um or kind of you know what what tech cards you're choosing this wouldn't be necessarily like a bad addition to the Sylveon GX mill decks that are already out there yeah that's the thing if it if you're going to put this in a deck it would have to be like a mill deck or um a denial deck of some sort mhm i think then it would be pretty good but We'll see how it how it unfolds, and we'll see what what else comes out with it. A lot of Sylvian love, huh? I mean, a lot of evolution love. Always, well, there's always they're always getting printed. Only the newest gen, like there hasn't been a Jolteon, Vaporeon, or Flareon GX or. No, but they were just printed in generations. That was two years ago. It's, it's two and a half it's years still, ago. It's still in standard. Well, that's true. But I was thinking the other day about all the cards that don't have a GX card, and I'm like, why is Palosand coming out with a GX card? <laughs> but not Primeape. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Primeape didn't even have an EX card. Why do I have two Silvalli GX cards and no Primeape GX? Doesn't well, the Silvallis do the same thing? It doesn't. That They're still in two different sets. <laughs> Fair. Still taking up a spot. I mean, but we got that Beware GX, so. We do have a be. Why are there so many Lycanroc GXs and no Primeape GX? Come on, Card Labs. What do I got to do? Sad. All right, Darren, your turn. All right, I will take Pancham and Pangoro. So, two more bad cards. Pancham is a 70 HP fighting Pokemon. Its first attack is, I guess it's kind of neat. Uh, for one fighting energy, does act tough. 10 plus damage is a uh, Pokemon. If this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached, it does 30 more damage. So you can do 40 damage with your little Pancham. That's kind of neat, I guess. Pangoro, 130 HP, dark type. It, uh, it has two attacks. The first attack for one dark, one colorless. Frenzied Punch, 50 plus damage. If this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, this attack does 50 more damage. Both this Pokemon and your opponent's active are now confused. The second attack is for DDC. Double stamp, 80 plus damage. Flip two coins. This attack does 40 more damage for each each heads. Fighting times two. Psychic minus 20. Retreat three. Man, I, I, I'll never play with this card. I won't. You shouldn't so I have either. A quick, <laughs> true. I have a quick ruling question for you, Darren. Yes. Um, so cards like Prism Energy and Rainbow Energy state that they only act as one energy at a time. Yes. But they count as all. Yes. So if I were to use Act Tough with one of those energies attached, the attack would not do 30 extra damage, correct? It would. It would do 40 damage. Even though it only acts as one energy at a time. So, yes, because... So- 
um, right, Act so. Tough costs one fighting, so it checks for your uh, your cost, and you have it. Then, when you do your damage, you go to do the rest of the effect of your attack, and it checks if you have a darkness energy attached, and you do. Cool, I broke the meta. Act Tough. <laughs> <laughs> the, you could two-hit KO Azor GX with Pancham. Um, how? Choice band, prism energy. I mean, you're hitting for 140. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, all right. I love it. This is the new meta, boys. <laughs> new meta. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear about Pyroar in Lysander Labs? Yes. All right, so Pyroar. It is a fire type stage one with 120 HP that evolves from Litleo. It has an ability called Unnerve. Whenever your opponent plays an item card or supporter card, prevent all effects of that card done to this Pokemon. And then it has an attack for fire, colorless, colorless, dominate Fang, 80 plus damage. If Lysander's Labs is in play, this attack does 60 more damage. It is weak to water, has no resistance, and a retreat cost of 2. Lysander Labs, it is a trainer stadium card that reads Pokemon tools in play have no effect, both yours and your opponents. This card stays in play when you play it. Discard this card if another stadium card comes into play. If card, same stadium stuff that's always printed. <laughs> so, um, interesting cards. I don't know that they're very good, but it's cool. Like, um, I wonder if we're going to see another Pokemon. Or something else that kind of goes along with Lysander. Because we saw this in Ultra Prism with Cynthia, Garchomp, Lucario. So True. maybe we see Lysander, Pyroar, Lysander Labs, and like something else. So, Darren, if I play Lysander Labs down um, and Garbodor is active with a tool on it, does that shut off Garbotoxin then? No. Because no. Garbotoxin only wants, only checks if you have a tool, it doesn't check if the tool does anything. Okay. Right. Gotcha. That one I did know because what what's the there's a there was something else that was there so was like there's another recent ruling that that mattered. Like if Klefki was attached to a Garbodor, it would still work Correct. until the next turn. That's because that's been asked before. So the ruling on that one that once Klefki is attached to Garbodor, it stops being a Pokemon and starts being a tool. So it go. would still work because it, <laughs> technically it's not a Pokemon with an ability. Minutia. So. Bun on a bun. So this Lysander Lab Stadium, let's say you have a Floatstone on your Garbodor, it would be stuck in the active because it couldn't retreat because <laughs> Floatstone wouldn't work, but your abilities wouldn't work either. All right, let's talk about... Uh, Darren, I'll save the last card leak for you, and I'll talk about the Dawn Wings and Dusk Main Necrozma Premium Collections that are coming out in May. Uh, so these are coming out on May 18th. Dusk That's Main my Necrozma birthday. Premium Collection and Dong Wings Necrozma Premium <laughs> Collection. Uh, each collection will come with a never before seen foil promo card of Dusk Main Necrozma or Dong Wings Necro- Necrozma, a jumble foil card of the GXs of each, a figurine of the featured Pokemon, a pin of the featured Pokemon, five booster packs, and a PTCGO code card. Uh, it's interesting to me. So you get the GX as a. F- jumbo but the foil promo cards are not gx's so i think those are coming out in tins so i guess you'll have to get them in tins because the premium collections won't have them rigged is that how you're understanding that too uh that's definitely how it reads but it's hard to imagine that like this is basically a gx box but not having a gx in it that'd be weird yeah seems dumb I know the Zorark GX boxes and the Zorark boxes were two different cards. And the Zorark is just obviously terrible. And then you had the Sovali GX boxes and the Sovali boxes. But I've never seen a box with a Jumbo GX where the smaller legal counterpart is not also a GX. I don't don't think think there's been one. So we'll see if this is mistranslated. We'll wait until Dan's birthday and we will celebrate Mm -hmm. the announcement. So in I case you guys it. were wondering what to get me, I like Duskmane better than Don Wings. And he likes Rayquaza better than both. True. So if you have a gold star Rayquaza, there it is. Oh. You want to send off. Yep. I'll sign it. Go. Nope. No, he won't. <laughs> no, he, right, will not. he will not do that. 
<laughs> Send it to me first. I'll sign it and give it to him and watch him explode. Cry. Cry. I'll, I'll record it. All right, Darren, give us the last cards. Last ones we have are Cubone and Alolan Marowak. Cubone is a fighting Pokemon, 60 HP. For a double colorless, it does heavy bone, 40 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. Weak to grass, no resistance, retreat cost of two. And then we have Alolan Marowak, fire type, 120 HP, stage one. For no energy cost, we have Limbo Limbo. Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Then shuffle your deck. And it's second attack for a double colorless energy, Alola Circle, 20x damage. This attack does 20 damage times the number of Pokemon you have in play with the Lolan in its name. Weak to water, resist none, retreat cost of two. All right, I kind of so like things. Alolan Marowak. I kind of like it. Two things. Kay. One, Cubone can two-shot a Zoroark with Heavy Bone Choice Band. <laughs> yeah, well, three, it takes three <laughs> turns, though, unless you... <laughs> no two-shot. You can't use what? this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn though. Oh, Pokemon Ranger. Um yeah. <laughs> thing number 2, Alolan Marowak, Alolan Executor GX. <laughs> <laughs> Cubone can one shot Zorak GXs with Heavy Bone. How? Uh two strong energies choice band. <laughs> Perfect. You're you're 100 percent right. <laughs> so get this: carbing, carbing break. Two strong energies from the discard pile go onto Cubone. Retreat into Cubone. Choice band attach. GG. Carbing break Cubone breaking the meta. 2018. Gosh, we are good at this. How have we not won a regional yet? Oh, we just don't play. If we played more, it'd be game over. Oh, you guys are I, so lucky. I would sleeve up my Cubone red card deck and it would be a good game. Oh, red card. Peeping peeping red card. I I could be the eight god, but I choose not to be. You're welcome, Pram. <laughs> Dan. Yeah, I want to talk about this Legends of Johto GX box. This is pretty cool, huh? Sure. Yeah, this comes out. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm still laughing. All right, continue. <laughs> Go. So this is going to be coming out in America and Europe on April 6th. This is a box that is going to be featuring uh, the Legends of Johto, um, including a brand new Raikou GX promo, an alternate art promo of Entei GX from Shining Legends, a foil jumbo promo of Raikou, Entei, and Suicune in the same vein as the original Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos jumbo. Then we're getting also a Suicune pen, a Suicune coin, six booster packs, and a PTC Geo code card. So at least Suicune's getting a little bit of love with the coin and the pen. Still no EX card for Suicune. Why? So, if you... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, if you're curious about what the Raikou GX does, though, um, it is a basic GX Pokemon with lightning typing that has 170 HP. It has three attacks. Its first attack for double colorless, Dig Claws, does 30 damage. Its second attack, lightning, lightning, colorless, colorless, Thunder, does 150 damage. Flip a coin, if Tails, this Pokemon does 50 damage to itself. And its GX attack for lightning, lightning, GX attack, effect unknown. So we don't know anything about the attack cost yet. It is weak to fighting, has a resistance to metal, and its retreat cost is a question mark. I think that TPCI should just drop us an email. And for the set that comes out after Forbidden Light, I will let them know what the GX card should be. That's really kind of you. Yep, it's very kind. Because I, I bet he's going to say Primate. I know what the competitive world wants, and I know what the collector world wants, and I can make it happen. You're like a complector. Tiff. Wow. Cut that one out. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> also, if you're curious, the Raikou, Suicune, and Entei Jumbo promo um, has 500 HP, so... Strong. Yeah, someday when they allow you to play those <laughs> First Jumbo cards. Jumbo Regional? Yeah, the Jumbo, Jumbo Regional. <laughs> Your whole deck has to be Jumbo cards. They make sleeves for them, so... In before Jumbo basic energies. I think we're on to something. Well, PCL. I think... 
what we are on to is the end of our news segment. Ah. Unless you guys have anything else. I have one um, more slick piece, but Dan, oh, sounds go. like you got a slick piece of news too. Yeah, it's probably the same thing. Uh, we did get a partial set list for Fit and Light. So if you're curious as to what some of the Pokemon are going to be in the set, um, it does show a water typed Greninja EX, a Volcanion Prism Star, uh, going to be the two things that are most notable uh, for the set list. So if you're curious about that, take a peek on over to Poke Beach and check it out. Nope, my news is different. Get right. Ah, get right. <laughs> uh, I bet you've been wondering what in the world could convince me to go to a league challenge yo darren what in the world could convince you to go to a league challenge how about first through fourth place printed magna zones oh that's not that's not bruxish isn't that cool what about the cynthia regional ones that are coming dude also cool oh yeah am i getting those in st louis you are yeah i'll try to get you should try and scoop up as many as you can (laughs) <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> bring some of our business cards along and trade them straight up <laughs> that's fair I'll that's a fair trade you this for years, dude Cynthia. just say you'll sign them if they'll sign the Cynthia's and give them to you no nope. even but have them, sign, <laughs> have them sign the sleeve not the actual card yeah that's the trick you gotta you gotta scoop the dude oh yeah sorry don't sign it unless there's a sleeve on it but yeah Perfect. just uh heads up trainers if you want to hit up a league challenge test out your real crazy Rotom deck uh you might win a stamped Magnezone. That's it for news, though, finally. Awesome. Well, let's move on then from our news section over to Oceana. Yo. Because that was a thing. Oceana was a lot of fun, was officially streamed, and I like the fact that it happened late at night because I got to watch a lot of it on Thursday night, and then I got to watch a lot of it on Friday night, and then the finals were on Saturday local time because Oceana is like, I don't know, 18 hours ahead of us or something ridiculous. Quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, last week, I went out on a limb and picked Buzzwell Garbodor to win. And while it didn't win, it was very underplayed and had a top eight finish. Ooh, so I'm happy with that. Who top eighted it? Uh, Frank. Per- oh, sorry. Let me correct myself. Team Dead Draw Gaming professional player, Frank Persick. Who on earth is Frank Persick? Man, uh, he is Tord's twin. Dude, speaking of Tord's, Tord's twin, uh, the original Tord got his third Oceanic, or I mean his his third IC title. Like, holy smokes. The OG Tord taking it home. Three out of six. Uh, yeah, right. He's won 50% of the Intercontinental Championships. To be fair, <laughs> Pram did that at one point, too. But he was one for two. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, um, three is a bigger number. However, however, I saw this really funny picture. It was a Norway flag with like a map on top of it, and it just had NA, EU, and OC crossed off with an X. I think yeah, that's actually the banner for Verbank right now. I think it is. I think that's probably where I saw it. But it's pretty good. <laughs> All he's got left is uh, South America, Latin, which is coming up, which he won't win this year. Is he not going? No, he is, but one of our guys will win instead. Oh, yeah, of course. Duh. Is this so? This was Frank's finish was our first top eight since making our pro team official, right? Well, for an IC, yes. Uh, actually, yeah, just in general, except for, you know, League Cups. Right. Yeah. We got lots of League Cup wins. <laughs> lots and lots of League Cup wins. Yeah. So huge, huge shout out to Frank for breaking the day, you know, the the day two top eight uh, wall. I think he's also in fifth in the North American leaderboards now. Oh, baby. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Can I tell you something more weird? Please. Okay. So out of all the decks in top 32, 12 of them played Zoroark, but 13 of them played Buzzwall. Whoa. So Most of were, those were Buzzwall Lycanroc, though, right? Most of them were Buzzwall Lycanroc with a couple Buzz Garb, obviously, because Caleb played it and Frank played it. And then there was another person who played it, uh, Zach Lesage. Caleb was in top 32, though, was he? I just No, Zach Lesi- Zach, Zachary Lesage also played Buzzwall Garbador, and he made top 32. Still repping that good old N.A., Yep. So the other one was uh, Buzzwool. Yeah, it was just those those two. Just those two that made day two. 
but they were more Buzzwall than Zorark, which is interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. You just jet punch away. Uh, but the grand champion, like Darren said before, was uh, Gardevoir Zorark. So it was a Zorark variant. Gardevoir was one of those decks that the EU kind of piloted together and ended up taking it home. Outside of that, as far as the meta go- metagame goes in the top 32, there was a few Zorark Elisipod. Uh There was four Vika Volt Bulu, uh, one Hoopa, one Volcanion, and one Ho'oh. And the Volcanion actually made top eight. So that's your boy representing. Your Love boy. It. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, notable United States uh, finishers in the top eight. We had Frank. We had Joe... Rudiger from, I think he's from Alaska, actually. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Pendarvis made top eight, and I think Azul also made top eight. That's right. Yep. Uh, but otherwise, it was a lot of Zorark, Gardevoir, a lot of Zorark, and a lot of Buzzwall. Buzzwall, for notable reasons, we were talking to Michael Pramowat not too long ago after his big finish in Memphis, and he talked about the only deck he was nervous about was Buzzwall. Uh, so a lot of people played it because of its typing matchup against Zorark is very positive. Talking with our pro team doesn't seem like Buzzwall is necessarily going to be the play for St. Louis because there's going to be so many different techs behind it out there now to beat Buzzwall. People are going to be a lot more prepared for it. So even though people knew it was coming in Oceana, uh, Ultra Prism wasn't legal, and they didn't know, I think, the kind of presence or how well it would do uh, compared to how well it actually did. So, any other notable... After day one, Benjamin Pham uh, from the Netherlands was the number one seed going into day two. He was playing Zorark Lissipod. Uh Both of our DDGers, Team DDGers, Caleb and Frank, were on stream. Frank was on a couple times. Uh, Caleb was on once. He ended up drawing that round uh, against Gardevoir oh. Zorark. Against Philip Schultz, right? Philip Schultz. That was the same player that uh, Frank ended up losing to in top eight. Yes. Yes. Because I watched it. I'm 100% sure? sure. Yes. Are we certain that it wasn't Robin? 100. Okay. Then yeah. Yeah, it was so close too. Caleb had that matchup won, and then in time, uh, turn two or turn three of time is when Philip Schultz ended up taking game two. Yep. To force the draw. And I think it was mostly because Caleb was going for... Um, he knew time was on his favor, so he was hoping that by the time that all three turns went out, uh, Philip wouldn't be able to take his last remaining prizes. He was going that route rather than the aggressive route of trying to knock out the attackers and take all six prizes of his own. So um, I'm not saying which way was right or wrong, but that's the route that he took and ended up not necessarily working out in his favor during that round, but still he started out 301 and then it kind of just went downhill from there. Uh, but still awesome showing. We had two people there. One of them took top eight. Caleb finished 531, finished 71st, which didn't get any points for, but he's still in the top 16. So he'll get that nice stipend down to Latin America. Yeah. And so will Frank. That's awesome. Man, I love our pro team. I Such cool guys. I really can't keep up with them (laughs) no and what's so amazing about the pro am team is that so we have a facebook chat that's just the pro team and we have a facebook chat that's just the am team and then we have one massive facebook chat that's the pro am team um and they they have separate chats so that way to keep the conversation more minimal so that way you don't get lost they don't ever use the other chats they always just use the pro am chat bouncing ideas off of each other right the only time we use those two chats is when we need them <laughs> like it's it's a lot of fun to be a part of nuts absolutely nuts yo how about Anything this else? yeah oh, how about this ahead. uh fun fact this is from twitter at benjamin p 37 uh <laughs> Tord Reckliff has won more internationals than league cups in his entire pokemon career that's crazy <laughs> Oh, it did man. look really funny watching the final match with Joe, uh, who is – he's an aged-up senior, I believe, this year. So I think he's only 16, going okay. against Tord. So, like, just the size difference and the comparison there 
It's crazy. It reminded me of, I think it was two years ago at Fort Wayne, two or three years ago at Fort Wayne when I forget who Andrew Mahone beat in the finals of Fort Wayne, uh, but he beat a Pyroar deck, I want to say, and the guy was an aged up master and just the age difference and the size difference is always funny to watch on stream because it's like, <laughs> you know, it just looks so weird. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. congratulations to Tord again for winning his third IC. Um, maybe it's time to move over to the U.S. so we can claim you for our own. That'd be really yes. nice. Mm -hmm. Think about it. <laughs> uh, one other note that I did want to bring up is that uh, there was a huge thing that happened over in internationals. Um, somebody did get disqualified for having a marked Mew EX in their deck. So make sure not to cheat. Don't cheat, especially if you're a notable player. It's not worth your repu reputation. Especially if you're anybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't so. cheat. All right. Well, do you guys have anything else you want to say about Oceana? No, just uh, again, quick congratulations to Tord on his third win and a more an extra special congratulations to Frank. Now no one will be asking who on earth Frank Persick is. That's right. I do want to say that I enjoyed a large, large chunk of the commentary. I thought it was great to see a, a uh, an official stream. It was a lot of fun to watch and listen to. Uh, with the commentary, Kyle Sablehouse and Ellie Long, um, those two just, I feel like even with the first time of those two working together, that they did a fantastic job. They were great to listen to all weekend. Um, and I, I very much enjoyed their commentary style. So good to them. Yeah, yeah huge props. Yeah, I would agree with that. So. So it's always fun watching watching an official stream, which we won't have this weekend, unfortunately. Is there going? Do we know there's going to be any stream in St. Louis? As of today, <laughs> as of today, Pokey Regionals on Twitter was asked that question: Is there going to be a stream? And they said, "Stay tuned." Sounds that like sounds a like yes, a no. Oh. <laughs> it's it sounds like a maybe and a strong possible to me. At least my guess would be that the people that they got to stream are either super flaky or have started to head second thoughts on if they're wanting to do it or not. It's expensive. Not, well, not only that, we got to remember a lot of the people that stream like that have done like unofficial streams. A lot of them are also players. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of think that they decided like if something happened, they probably decided to play instead, you know? Right. I would lean towards a possible stream. But like you said, there's it's you know it really could there's a lot of conjecture here. It could go either way, and for any number of reasons. I think that uh, this means that there is going to be a stream, and they just haven't announced who it's going to be yet because it's exciting. <laughs> we're we're like three days out, man. <laughs> Seems like a bad marketing move, but that's just me. That's hey, man, it, it worked for Cloverfield Paradox, right? Exactly. Yeah, but they also had a Super Bowl commercial, so <laughs> that's true. How do let's, we get one of those? Yeah. Let's talk about um, <laughs> Let's talk about Collinsville for a second. There's a lot of people going. There are. Did you 1, guys see 000, the numbers? 1039 masters? That's right. That right? Holy smokes. And yeah. roughly 33% of us are going to be there. As in between me you and Darren. Yep. Roughly 33%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be there. <laughs> oh, that's I'll just... be traveling with Team DDG members, Ryan Grant and Ben Thimer. Very cool. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited because now this weekend where there's gonna be twenty three members of Team DDG. Oh uh, well. Dan? <laughs> hey Dan, what deck are you playing? Oh, that's a secret. I can't tell you. You mean you don't know? No, I we figured it out. Okay. Aaron hasn't been reading the group chat. Nope. It's a I secret. Mean, we Sorry, did guys. figure it out. I'm not happy about it, but yeah, I guess we figured it out. It's a secret. secret Basically, secret? Dan will be enjoying secret. enjoying the scenery by about eh, two o'clock. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> you can go find a nice barbecue place, dude. I got the hookup, man. I heard. I saw that because okay. I read the group chat. Um. <laughs> Anyways, I typically, it doesn't really matter what 60 sleeves you hand me. 
I'm going to be enjoying the scenery by two o'clock regardless. (laughs) (laughs) At this point, I'm just, we're going for the surprise. Like, who knows? Maybe if I can play something that no one's ever tested against before, it could work out. I've got the secret deck. All right. No, you have a deck. Uh, Quad quad Cubone is not a secret deck. Quad Cubone. (laughs) But it one shot Sorox. It does. Which could help you. What, what else do you really need to do in a format? Like, if you can one shot Zorak, you just win, right? I mean, there's a lot of popularity right now in mill decks. I don't know how you're going to knock out a Celesteela or a Whale Lord. Good point. Good luck. You're going to be doing some good dodging. Just keep using that carbink. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You'll mm. get there eventually. I think that's. That's really narrowed it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so, so aside from Dan's secret deck, what else do we expect uh, out of Collinsville? Is it going to be a lot of the same of what we saw in Oceana, or are you expecting with Ultra Prism legal? This is the first tournament that Ultra Prism is legal, the first major tournament. Uh, ARG did have a tournament last weekend where they had Ultra Prism legal cards, but this is the first one, uh, first regional, first big tournament where Ultra Prism is legal. Are you expecting to see a lot of Glaceon or Dugtrio or Magnazone? Uh, I'm actually expecting to see a lot of Garbodor. A lot. I know that's not the fun deck to talk about, but man, this, to me, as an outsider, looks like looks like the play, or at least what you need to worry about the most. What do you think, Dan? I think that Glaceon is going to be the most played card from Ultra Prism, except for Cynthia. Really? Mm-hmm. And the really cool thing about the regionals now is that we will get those questions answered because of how great of a thing that online deck submission is. Oh man. Yeah. That's arcane nine will answer all those questions and like shout outs to Carlos. Cause his software is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Like it's really cool that we can get that kind of analysis now. Absolutely. So I know that having, uh, like, having all 1039 deck lists at least like in your hands, that's just, it's like, and just being able to search, hitting that control F button, you know, super cool. I know that, uh, I, at least I hope, Doug Trio is going to take home the Professor Cup. Yo, let's go, Doug <laughs> Oh, Trio. there's one of those this weekend. Dar- oh, Darren, I wish you were doing the thing. I wish so as well, but what do you do? I want you to judge a regional mm. someday. And you know, I just don't think that's going to happen sometime soon. I would like to sometime. Well, someday when we have a regional. Someday when we're running every regional. See, the, the thing that. about judging, uh, you can't also work a booth or do anything else. That's fine. We can give you the weekend off. Oh, oh, thank you. That's real kind. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if the other leg of this tripod agrees. Uh, maybe. Uh, majority rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Well, so... So you think there's going to be lots of Glaceon and maybe yes. not so much of anything else except Cynthia. So what, uh, I think that a lot of people are going to play Garchomp, Lucario simply because it's Garchomp and Lucario. Yeah. Um, I imagine we'll see a good amount of Duskmane, Magnazone. Um, the deck is fairly easy to pilot and that means a lot of good things. That means good things for a lot of people. Um, that's just as far as new cards from Ultra Prism are concerned. I think outside of that, um, people are still going to play Gardevoir. I don't really think the meta changes too terribly much other than we're adding new things to it, right? I don't necessarily well, know that we're taking anything away. I don't know. if I think it changes completely. Oh. You're looking at a lot of people who go and usually net deck. And if, they're, and if they have any level of intelligence whatsoever, they're going to say, oh, I'm just going to play Gardevoir Zoroark. Oh, wait. Ultra Prism just came out and Magnazone's a thing. And Duskmane Necrozma is a thing, and Alolan Dugtrio is a thing, and you're wrecked. Like, Gardevoir is not going to stand a chance against any of those decks. Like, are you playing Gardevoir with weakness policy all of a sudden now? As opposed mm. to, some, like, there's got to be some kind of shift in the meta in order to combat this coming out. Otherwise, metal's just going to run away with it. So, let, let, let me, let's look at it this way, right? Uh, one, you don't need weak putness policy because Duskmane is one shotting Gardevoir regardless. I'm talking about more like Doug Trio. I know. <laughs> Teach me how to Dougie. 
Douglas R. Trio. Douglas R. Um, Trio taking it home. I will eat a sock if Douglas takes it home. <laughs> I actually, you know what? I that's what I'm gonna play now, just so that when I win with it, that's what I can name the deck. <laughs> Douglas R. Trio, teach me how to Dougie. <laughs> um, but see, I don't, I don't necessarily like. I think Gardevoir is still good because it's. I don't think enough people are gonna have the the guts to say let's play Doug trio and those people that are going to have the guts to play that are going to be not playing guard of war at the top tables. You know, one other deck that I, has been whispered about in small circles is leafy on Lurantis. I think that that deck is super cool. I think that it definitely like, cause what, Leafeon plus Lorantis, 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 Lorantis plus Choice Band is 220, right? Sounds right. Yeah, I think that's right. So <laughs> I feel like it's going to be not super common to have four Lorantis out at one time. But the idea behind the deck is very cool. And if you do happen to get that, you're one shotting Zoroarks. So. So I just don't know what to expect this weekend because it's this vicious circle that's coming all over the place. Well, so part yeah. of me thinks that ideally Duskman Necrozma is like the play to beat. Like Magnazone with Duskman Necro- Necrozma is the deck to beat. So the reason I think that is because I don't think Buzzwell is going to be that heavily played because of the text. So I think a lot of people will play it, but then people will shy more away to Gardevoir. And Gardevoir can beat Buzzwell, Buzzwell Lycanroc, you know. But it can't beat Duskman Necrozma. Duskman Necrozma has a decent matchup against Buzzwall, but dominates Gardevoir. So I think Duskman Necrozma is the deck to beat. So then you have to start looking at other decks, like Volcanion, or one card we haven't really talked about is like Weavile, which one of our pro players, Rukan, just wrote about as the as a great sleeper pick to go into Collinsville is a Weavile list. Because you have a one prize attacker that can hit for a heck of a lot of damage. You're playing against a bunch of Zoroarks. You're playing against a bunch of Tapu Leles. You're playing against a bunch of Gardevoirs. There's going to be a lot of abilities on the field. Here you go. Knock out my Weaviles. And you've got Zoroark to go and get basically any card you need. I think you have to start looking deeper into the field in order to get through 1,000 other players. And one thing we haven't talked about is the reemergence of Greninja. Because Greninja could be a thing. So you better tech in Giratina. Otherwise, you're going to be in a lot of trouble with Greninja with Cyrus now. So I think you really have to put a lot more thought into this tournament than just saying, I'm going to go play Gardevoir Zorark because that's what just did so well in Oceana. Everything's different. So I think a lot of the pros are all up in the air about it. So I'm not necessarily going to disagree with what you're saying. um, Because I think that we will definitely see a more diverse meta what I was simply stating before is that I don't think we're going to see old decks drop from the meta. I think that they will still be played, obviously not in highest numbers because we do have so many new things coming out. Um, but I don't think that there's a lot of decks that were good in the meta previously, maybe Buzzwool, but I, I don't know that there's necessarily a lot of decks in the previous meta that someone's going to pick up and say, Oh, I'm not playing this because X is out in ultra prism now. I think that's fair. You know, one deck we haven't really talked about is Bulu. We just had a brand new podcast series start uh, today with Cameron Chinoy. Uh Sorry, let me let me rephrase that. Uh, Team DDG and player Cameron Chinoy. and he started uh, talking about Bulu today, and it's a actually a really good listen. Um, and it kind of convinced me that Bulu has a strong footing for this weekend. I think Vico Bulo is is gaining a lot of steam, and it's doing really well at League Cups. Uh, the reason I think it's doing really well at League Cups is because a lot of the bigger players are taking it to League Cups and playing it. I still think it runs into consistency issues. If you can't get that turn two out, you're into you're in a lot of trouble. The same thing that you run into trouble with with any Garbodor variant. If you don't get a right. turn two Garbodor out, you run into issues. Uh, I still think it's a strong deck. I just don't know if it's going to necessarily be the answer. Um, to the format. I think there is going to be some that you'll see in day two. I don't expect it to win, 
but I do think that some stronger players are going to play it. I mean, look at how much it hits for like a million once you get it set up. It's <laughs> yeah. just getting it set up that, that it runs into issues. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Do we want to pick a winner, an expected winner? For a deck or for player? For a deck. Well, I can't say because my deck is secret. All right, well, <laughs> pick second place then, Dan. <laughs> what are All you right. going to beat in the finals? I am going to beat... I can't believe I'm humoring you with this. <laughs> I am going to beat Frank Persick playing Glycopod. Okay. That's what Frank is playing. Frank's oh, going to win. He's playing Glycopod Garbodor? I don't know that for sure. Okay. Frank's going to win stay in a deck. by taking, sec- taking second? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's going right. to get second. Losing to my secret dot deck. Secret dot deck. All right. All right. Darren? All right. <laughs> uh, so I know we had this big, long conversation about what needs to be done to make a big splash with the new set coming out. I'm still picking Gardevoir. My goodness. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, I, you know, everything that you talked about makes 100% perfect sense. There's still going to be a ton of people that just play what Tord played, and someone's going to make it work. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with... I'm torn between two. I think that I'm going to go with uh, Zorark Lycanroc. Nice. Coming back. I like it. I was going to say Galissapod Zorark, but I think I'll stick with with Zorark Lycanroc. So that is uh, St. Louis. So that's this weekend already. Gosh, time flies. Um. Cool. Well, why don't we move into a brief business update because we're running low on time. Uh, We always like to do this every once in a while just to kind of give you a heads up on where we are. So we talked a lot about the stream last week and what we're doing for Madison Regionals. I just want to reemphasize it again in case you missed that. So Madison Regionals is coming up June 1st to the 3rd. We hope to see everybody there. We are going to be there full force. Uh, we're starting the work. We start, we're starting the preparations. We're getting the word out there. We started accepting applications for commentary. Um, we're reaching out to different advertisers to help us with the stream, researching different setup techniques. We just really want to make this better than any stream you've ever seen before and kind of take the entire concept to the next level. Uh, so any ideas, keep them coming. We love them, uh, and we'll keep you updated as things go. Uh, so that's super exciting. Really, really happy about that. With that, uh, our Twitch channel, Dan can give a little bit more insight, but we crossed the 900 follower mark. We're up to 906 on that. Uh, Our YouTube channel, if you paid attention a couple weeks ago, uh, we did pass the 1,000 subscriber mark. Uh, We're at 1,039 right now, which is super good. Our podcast continues to thrive. It's definitely our strongest outlet. Uh, I don't really have exact numbers because I haven't necessarily looked up the amount of total plays that it has. But SoundCloud, which is the main tracker that I continuously use because it links all of our RSS feeds, uh, that is is continuously growing. Uh, the one thing that I did want to focus on was our website, which I think I said at the beginning of the year that I wanted to get this up to about a thousand views per day. Uh, so since February first, we have only had two days uh, of under two hundred visits. Uh, so on February ninth and February tenth, uh, we had less than two hundred visits, which I guess makes a little bit of sense. Maybe just based on the fact that it was a Friday and a Saturday. So uh, other than that, every other day has been above 200. And then we recently had, like I said, an article from Rukan that came out, um, which February 11th, February 12th, and even today, February 13th, our viewership has spiked quite a bit. So uh, super excited about that. I've been really, really busy uh, packing up orders and sorting the last of like the 85 to 100,000 bulk so can, it's going to be done soon, and then I'll finally be able to start uploading every single card onto the website. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any more business updates unless there's anything you guys wanted to say. I guess for me, I just have a couple of really quick things. Uh, the Twitch thing, after this weekend in St. Louis, um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, streaming over the next two days, um, the day that this comes out, and then the Thursday following. Um, but then I'll be in St. Louis Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So following St. Louis, I'm going to get back on a more 
consistent stream schedule. Um, so that'll be good. On top of that, we do have an article coming out soon. Uh, two new articles coming out from DDG AM team members, Jamie DePamphilis and uh, Andrew Odegaard. So be on the lookout for that. And that's that's really all I have. Um, other than for those of you podcast listeners, if you are anyone you know did in commentating or being any sort of a volunteer for um, the stream team at Madison, uh, we do have an open application open for everything. So if uh, someone you know is interested, uh, send them to our Facebook or our Twitter and we can get them hooked up with the link for the application. Uh, I'm going to jump in and talk about Patreon very briefly. So to our longtime listeners, you should know Patreon is where we go if you think we deserve any of your money, other than if you just want to buy cards from us, which is a great idea, by the way. <laughs> the best ideas. Patreon, uh, where you, c- you can find us at patreon.com slash deaddrawgaming. We currently have 25 patrons, and they are giving us just about $100 per month, which is amazing. Uh, I'm always, always so grateful for everything you guys do. Um, we have a, a fantastic Discord channel that all you do is donate $1, and you get to be a part of our inner DDG circle, where we are always trading memes, talking about anime and manga, talking about Pokemon sometimes. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes you just, uh, you know, trade Dan faces and Danny faces. True. Wait, they do that on there? Very, very sometimes. Very, very infrequently, very but it sometimes. has happened. Yeah. Very, very sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great place, and we love having more people. Uh, at a at a further tier down, uh, you can be a part of our podcasting. Uh, with the patron cast all you got to do is donate at the patron cast level and you and i will talk about whatever you want to we have a new patron cast coming out later this week with chris kemp uh, where chris and i talk about anime which we do every few months yeah so if if you're a current patron cast level patron listening to this podcast now and you want to talk to me about something and record it with me you got to talk to me, man. Like I, I, I need more people that are willing to record with me. Like I, we can talk about anything as long as it's PG. I am willing. <laughs> what about the Philadelphia Eagles? If you want to talk about the can Philadelphia, you talk about the Eagles and be PG at the same time. Yeah, yes. they won the Super Bowl. Yes. Oh, if that's just a just a joke. If anyone out there wants to talk with me about the Eagles on a patron cast, I am so ready. Please. (laughs) But uh, that's all I have really to say about Patreon. Uh, There is, you know, we do also give out monthly discount codes for the website. So if you like to buy cards from us as well as support us, that's an option. And we'll give you a little kickback, you know. Awesome. Yeah, it's usually worth it. So definitely check that out. With that, I think we can move into our... One more thing. Yep. Darren, talk about uh, the deep dive, please. Yeah, so earlier I had said very briefly that Cameron Chinoy came out with a new podcast about uh, Vika Bulu. Uh, that's going to be a, uh, a new thing. He wants to do one to two episodes leading up to an event where he focuses on, with, where he and a guest focus on a single deck for that tournament. So for St. Louis, he and his guest Paolo Amaro talked about Vika Bulu. Uh, and he call uh, he calls this whole new podcast of his the deep dive, and uh, I thought it was really great. His first episode went live today, so yesterday for any listeners out there. And um, gosh, I think he did a great job. I'm really excited to see what else he has in store. Nice. I've yet to get a chance to listen to it, but because it did just come out very recently before we started recording, so I've yet to get a chance to listen to it. But I'm I'm very much into it. So. Like he's got some great talent on, on the docket. Like I don't want to spoil it too much, but he said, you know, he he's willing to talk to. He has got the in with a bunch of people on the West Coast, so like, he's gonna be talking to Finnegan Lynch, like, 
I just he, he named off a bunch of names that I'd heard of, and I'm like, you know what? You can record whatever you want, buddy. Like, I'm willing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out the deep dive if you're into uh, competitive TCG. It's pretty cool stuff. Awesome. Cool. Now, I think we can do weekly top five. Danny, are you excited for this weekly top five or what? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Just being honest. This is honestly the this was the hardest weekly top five for me since we started doing weekly top five. I don't even know what Gen One Pokemon are. Like I just know what Pokemon are. I don't know what your favorite Pokemon is from Generation One. Yeah, but that's different. For those of you that don't know, Danny's favorite Pokemon is Zapdos. No, it is not. Well, then it's Arcanine. <laughs> yes, it is. I knew it was one of the two. If Zapdos was in shining form, then it would be Zapdos. That's... <sighs> well, why don't we talk about our favorite Gen 3 Pokemon? That's right. Yeah, this week, that. This week, our top five is our favorite Gen 3 Pokemon. Uh, Dan. Gen 3. <sighs> For yeah, those you of you going... that don't know, this was the Ruby Sapphire Emerald Era, and also the Hoenn. Can we use legendary uh, Pokemon or not? I of did. course. Yeah, I definitely. Did. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> okay, I'll go, I'll go first <laughs> with my number five. You guys, so like I mentioned, this was the hardest weekly top five I've ever had. Uh, normally, I write down 10, 10 things and then go from top five there. I wrote down nineteen this time. Um, and this is where my top five rounded out with those 19. Number five, Claydol. Oh, Claydol. Because we of the close. TCG card or what? <laughs> no, they just, I love the design. Uh, something about a floating rock that shoots psychic beams out of his arms is really cool. Neat. I, my number five is Shedinja. I really Ooh. like the, the video game concept. How you have to catch Shedinja is just really neat to me. For those of you that don't know, Shedinja can only be acquired when you have a Ninkata that evolves at level 20 into a Ninjask. You have an empty slot in your party, and you have at least one Pokeball in your bag. For those of you who didn't know, my number five <laughs> is Mighty Yenna. Oh. oh. I like Mighty Yenna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My number four, Slay King. My number four is Ralts. What? Yeah, I'm a little lost there, too. He looks like Gumby. (laughs) (laughs) Super, super duper cutie. (laughs) Little cutie duty. Oh, my goodness. Okay. (laughs) My number four is Regice. (laughs) I got you guys rolling. (laughs) Oh, that's good. My number three is Mudkip. My number three. How far was he up on your starter cast? I think number four. Oh, okay. He's in top five for sure. You like that mud slap, huh? Do you not? Sure. That's fine. My number three is Rayquaza. My number three is Manectric. Ooh, only Ooh, three. I thought, what? I definitely thought that was going to be number one. Nope. Interesting. You're going to hear right. number one. You're going to be like, oh, duh. Danny, you know Seismitoads from Gen 5, right? It's not Seismitoad. All right. <laughs> number two, Dustclops. Really? I knew yes. Dustclops was on there. My number two is Dustclops. I, yeah, I saw that coming. My yeah, number two I is Met- Metagross. Mm. My number two is Ludicolo. Ooh. Ludicolo was on my list of 19. Ludicolo is so fun. I think he was in my, like, he, he made it to top eight before I crossed him off. Just a fun Pokemon. Um, my number one. You guys had no idea this was coming. <laughs> I'll let you guys guess. Is it Rayquaza? Yes. Ah, nice. Rayquaza. My number one is uh, one of my favorite. It's been my top three of all Pokemon. Sometimes it's my number one. Well, sometimes it's yeah, pretty close. It's uh, Ludi Colo. I just said that as my number two. You did. We're almost Ludi 20. Colo. I do love Ludi Colo. Pretty great. If he I was, was going also to on... make the next GX's. Ludi Colo oh, would have that. a GX attack. 
Oh, After yeah, Primeape. Prime yes. Yep. Uh, my number one is also in my top three Pokemon. Uh, it's Sableye. Wow. Yeah, I don't know why you thought I would have known that. I had no like idea. Like all the graphics I've made for like Twitch layouts and stuff, I've all had Sableye in it. I'm 99% certain I've seen none of those. Well, that just means you never watched me stream. Thanks for the support. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, I remember like your your follow notification and stuff was say what? It was. Uh, now yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually thought that was uh, the default for some reason. <laughs> Well, now that things got super awkward, we can move on to the buy-sell trade. No, we can move on to the question of the week. Question of the week. (laughs) Darren, can you do it without squeaking? Uh, (laughs) Question of the week! No squeak. Just metal. Uh, Question of the week. We wanted to know (laughs) where you thought Cynthia was going to end up over the next few weeks. Last week was at $3. It's already over $4 pretty much everywhere that you look. And right now it's only going up. But, you know, that can change. And a lot of you really thought that it's going to. Uh, some, Some were really high. Some were really low. So let's get to it. Let's start on... I think she'll probably be back at the Pokemon League, right? Is that where what? she normally ends up? <laughs> yeah, do you guys not? Oh, oh my goodness. Where did that show come? Who replaced Dan with Danny? She's, this she's week. the Gen 4 champion. Darren, answer the question. <laughs> you know, I never played Gen 4. Yeah, she's the Gen 4 champion. Spoiler alert. No, I'll never play Gen 4. The ending oh. is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> our first our first response that I'm going to give you is from Mr. Brett Stratton. He said, uh, considering the high value theme deck, uh, I don't think it'll climb very much. Possibly, and it could also possibly be reprinted in another set or theme deck. If not, I think it might jump to six to seven when rotation hits, because typically staples inflate insanely high because everyone is trying to buy into the new set. Kyle. H, our favorite Taco King, says, good thing I bought like eight from you on massive opening day. Good job, Kyle. Proud of you. Uh, We have Devin saying, if you buy two Mock Strike theme decks, you get four of them. Most of the stuff for the Garchomp, and as well as most of the stuff for the Garchomp deck, and they cost $12 a piece. So for for Cynthia, uh, pay for over half the cost. The rest is just bonus goodies. That's just a really good point. Like, if you want Cynthia right now, it's probably not a bad idea to just go buy two Mock Strike decks, which are likely going to go up in price uh, on the secondary market. Patrick says, I speculate that Cynthia will settle at $2. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's bold. Probably should have already happened. Let's take one more from Facebook, and then we will move on to other avenues. This one's from... Mr. Jordan T. He said, I would say around $6 for non-hollow. The reverse will likely climb to 10. We already know how solid the card is, and in this format, it will dominate. Even Bridget was up to six recently, so I wouldn't be surprised if it got to those numbers during the shortage. After, it may drop to just a buck or two. Thanks, Thanks Jack Black. <laughs> Let's go to Twitter. Pokemon Crossroads at PKMN Crossroads says, I predict five to seven dollars before we see it go down in price once the reprints hit. Uh, Tiana at PKMN Tiana said, If history repeats itself in the same way that Professor Sycamore did when his ability was reintroduced to the game, I can see regular art sitting at around five bucks. It's super playable and often worth lowering a, Sycam- a Sycamore count for. Uh, Pokeball Nation, who is at Pokeball Nation, said end of the month, hopefully about $6 if there is no sign of an Ultra Prism reprint. Still waiting to cash in on a few Cynthia's that I have. And how about we finish off with 
the good old Discord group. DDG Chris says $8 if they don't reprint, $5 in two weeks easily. And uh, he said that uh, on Monday, so. Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> Chris is good stuff. He's very smart. He is. Colin says probably $7 at most. 9999Ben9 says $10 if it stays at two per box. And he's saying, yeah, averaging two to three Cynthia per box. And then finally, to Colonel says, easily $7 in my opinion. If these series are correct, then it will rise by a dollar each week till the news will eventually break one way or the other. I just don't think that one Cynthia is worth the value of two Bridget, in my honest opinion. So there you go. There are our responses from last week's question. Can I what give you th- my educated opinion? Please do. That's. I was just going to ask you, what What do you think, Danny? Okay, so I think Chris pretty much hit the nail on the head with what he said. I think that after Collinsville, you'll see Cynthia over $5. And then if they do not announce a reprint, which I do not think that they're going to, I think that you are only going to be able to get uh, Ultra Prism packs in collection boxes, tins, etc. Uh, loose blisters, maybe, if you're lucky. But I don't expect... Uh, booster box reprints if if it does happen it's going to be severely small and super allocated to different distributors so like your storefronts may only get three or four or maybe 10 to 12 boxes each a lot of times that happens in magic the gathering i think pokemon's kind of going that route as well especially with this set uh if that happens i think that come time for like internationals you're going to see cynthia be seven to eight dollars per card per single uh, just because it's going to be a three or a four off and that will hold throughout rotation unless we get a set that comes out that has a cynthia reprint in it so the reason we bought so many cynthias is under the impression that we are going to hold them for a while uh, because i think it's just going to climb in price if you look at historically things like vs seeker that was at seven to eight dollars until it became very readily available in the Rayqua- Rayquaza and Keldeo theme decks. Yep. Um, then it, it dropped down to like four four bucks a piece. It slowly climbed a little bit until rotation hit, and then it went out of rotation. Uh, Via Seeker was in a couple sets, but for the most part, Phantom Forces was the one that you need to worry about. Uh, I opened up a lot of Phantom Forces when it came out because that was the first set that I really got invested into the game. And you would get between three and four via Seekers per box. Cynthia is a little less. Uh, Cynthia is actually only about like 1.8 Cynthia per box. So that means it's less readily available right now on the market, even though you do have theme decks that you can get it in. I think those are going to skyrocket on the open market. And a lot of uh, stores and vendors are going to buy a bunch of those theme theme decks just to open them up, just to sell the Cynthia's because... They can sell the Cynthia's for seven to eight dollars down the road, in my opinion. So, I would recommend buying up as many cheap Cynthia's as you can right now. Um, I have personally watched it climb from a two dollars and seventy-five cent card on TCG Player to four dollars and five cents over the past week and a half. And as the quantity on hand continues to go down, it will continue to rise. And I have no reason to expect it to be less than seven dollars when you compare it to like Fighting Fury Belt and Trainer's Mail and Max Elixir and other cards like that in the past. A lot of people compared it to like Professor Sycamore, but it's nothing like Professor Sycamore at all because Professor Sycamore was printed in three different sets. So you had an XY base, you had it in Phantom Forces, and then you had it again in Breakpoint. So there were three different sets, a lot of uh, abundancy of Professor Sycamore, and even then it's still a $2 card. Uh, N is the same way. It's a $4 card, even though you had it in multiple sets. So you had it in Black and White Base, you had it in... Uh, Fates Collide, you had it in Dan, help me out. Something else. NVI, right? In multiple Noble promos. Victories. Yep. Noble victories. In multiple promos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you had it in a few different sets and it's still a four dollar card. And I think Cynthia's probably a three t- three of in most decks and then probably a four of after rotation hits and Sycamore rotates out. So uh, if a reprint doesn't get announced for Ultra Prism, and even if it does unless Cynthia becomes more readily available in the market, uh, which we are positive it's not in uh, Forbidden Light so far. So unless it comes out in the following set, which won't happen until August, um, it's gonna get it's gonna get a little pricey for an uncommon. 
It was a long-winded response to <laughs> But so full of knowledge nuggets. Like, ooh, yes. I'm just very full of knowledge nuggets all of a sudden. Awesome. So let's ask a question for this week. Does that sound good? I love questions. Okay. Question of this week. So <laughs> we just got wind that the uh, international tournament is going to take place in Columbus. I want to know what people's opinions are of that. If you would prefer to be in Columbus or Indiana- Indianapolis. And if neither, where would you want it to be? And don't just say your backyard. Somebody's going to troll now. I don't have a yard. <laughs> Yeah, Darren's backyard. Man, my yard is great. Everyone's going to be sleeping in Darren's yard for Madison, Madison. Regionals. That's right. He's going to have milkshakes. All right. <laughs> the question of the question. week. Sorry, sorry. We're going to move on because we're buck forty into this. Question of the week for this week, everyone, is where would you prefer nationals? So it's in Columbus. Would you prefer it was in Indy? Or do you like that it's in Columbus? Or do you not like either of them and would prefer it somewhere else? Let us know. Give us your reasoning. And your answer might be featured in next week's episode. There you go. Perfect. With that, we can move into the buy-sell trade of the week. Um, I didn't buy a whole lot this week. I got the Zoroarks in. I, I did actually buy some Metagross. I bought some Sylveons just because those are becoming more popular again. Bought a bunch of Ultra Prism codes. I'm very excited because I got um, a ton of Cynthia in, and I got the Shining Charizard and Gold Star Charizard in. And then I did get an email from Charlie Herlocker yesterday, who's the U.S. representative for Ludkins, which is a PSA grading service. Uh, and... We are getting our PSA shipment back in, I think it either comes in tomorrow or Thursday, and then I'll shoot a YouTube video unboxing it all and going over the grades. I'm super excited because I know what one of the grades is already because I couldn't wait to hear it. So you should watch that YouTube video because there's one card in there. We have about $500 invested in this grading, and there's one card in there alone that's going to cover our investment. Danny, we got a 10. Stay tuned. We got a we 10. Got what? Something's we a 10. We did get a 10 of something. We oh, got multiple 10s, but one thing what? that's a 10 is worth. Eh, it's a, it's like 475. Whoa. <laughs> that's super exciting. So this is our first like big grade hit, right? Yeah, and I paid $90 for that card. Wow. And then $10 to get it graded. So $100 will turn into almost 500. That's amazing. By getting graded. Grading is so great. Mm-hmm. Ah, great. Grating. Grated so pay attention card. for that. Other than that, uh, nothing really for buy, sell, trade of the week. We're going to focus a lot on selling and buying over the next couple months because we have Madison to get prepared for. So hopefully, eventually, I'll have more time to go through this segment. But for now, we can move into our open discussion, which I think I say too much already during the podcast. So I'm pretty good. Dan, how are you? As far as open discussion goes, I have just a couple s- pretty small things. Uh, one of those small things being at the beginning of every week's podcast, you guys hear a little bumper of someone welcoming you to the show. And I recorded like 12 new ones with different people this week. So I'm so excited stuff for you guys. I'm very excited about these bumpers. Uh, the other thing then, if you guys are going to St. Louis um, and you want to meet up, I will be there. I'm a welcoming dude. So if you want to say hello, oh, please do that. Nice. Very cool. Uh, open I'll be discussion. wearing my Team DDG hoodie. So, Oh, is that because you are a Team DDG owner? Team DDG Honorary member for one weekend. I love Except it. Except for, your, unless your my results is, are bad, then I don't count. Your sweatshirt is navy to represent that you are not part of the team. Honorary member. I, I can, one weekend honorary member? That We can nope. give him that. Can't we give him I that? I definitely cannot. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, that sounds super fun, Dan. I'm actually really jealous that you're going. I Same. will I will be at my Pokemon League. I had to skip last week. I had some family stuff. But this week, I'll be there. And uh, I'm going to be playing uh, some proxy decks. So hopefully, anyone out there, I hope you can join me. I know one of my regulars is going to be also in St. Louis. So that's sad. That's me. Uh, no, it's Drew. Yep, that's me. I'm Drew. <laughs> I will be at a high school theatrical performance. Oh. Gross. They, they grow up so fast. Lacey's already a high schooler. Oh, man. <laughs> she's as smart as most high schoolers, for sure. I believe that, actually. Well, as long as she's not eating Tide Pods. She calls you Papa Dan. I don't know why she <laughs> likes you, but she does. Wow. She doesn't like anybody else, but she likes Dan. Wait, Pod Pod Dan? Tide Pod, Pod Dan? Tide Pod Dan. Tide Pod Dan. <laughs> <laughs> PSA, don't eat Tide Pods. Nope. Um, Darren, you got anything else? Nah, I'm just, man, there's so much uh, Pokemon stuff going on right now. I've just... I'm so hyped on our bumpers. I have so much content coming out over the next week and every week. It's just a great time to be in the Pokemon content creation world. I have like this giant list of Danny boxes that I want to get through and there's just never an episode that I can do it because there's so much going on. Next week. Let's make time for a Danny box next week. We'll see. You just dust one of those off and we'll, we'll make it happen. (laughs) All right, Dan, take us home. All right, you guys. So if you enjoyed episode number 71 of Dead Draw Gaming, a Pokemon TCG podcast like no one ever was, make sure to hit that like button down below and share this podcast with all of your friends. That is all we have for you. Uh, Make sure to check us out next week for episode number 72, where we're going to be talking about the recap of the St. Louis regionals that I attended. But that's all... And one. Yeah. That's all we have for you guys this week. So for Darren, for Danny, and for myself, Dan, we will see you next time. Bye.